Hello, welcome in. I'm Liz Grace, and this is Galactic Mythology. I have a very epic episode for you. It's on the up-and-coming Jupiter retrograde in Gemini, happening on October 9th of 2024. This episode aired on the Fun Astrology podcast on Sunday, October 6th, and I thought that it would be proper to add this episode on my channel over here on Galactic Mythology. However, if you are a fan of Thomas Miller and his podcast, The Fun Astrology Podcast, chances are you've already heard this content. But you could go ahead and just give this video a like and give it a comment so it boosts it in the algorithm, something I would deeply appreciate. So Liz Grace, welcome to the podcast and thanks for your thoughts. Hello, Fun Astrology family. This is Liz Grace Christie, your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer ready to share some insights into Jupiter's retrograde in Gemini, which starts on October 9th. We're also going to chat about some of the goddesses from the asteroid belt, along with the planet Uranus and Taurus. And last but not least, the up-and-coming Mercury retrograde and Sagittarius on November 25th, 2024. Trust me, there's a fascinating pattern unfolding here all centered around Jupiter's retrograde station on October 9th. I'm looking forward to spilling this cosmic tea with you all today. So let's jump right in to the chart specifics. For this event, I'm using the Equal House system, and since I'm based in Portland, Oregon, we'll be working in Pacific Standard Time. In this chart, we have a first house cusp ascendant at 23 degrees of Cancer. Now, depending where you are, you might feel this retrograde starting as early as October 8th. But don't you worry now. The energy is the same no matter your location. Over the next four months, Jupiter will backtrack from 21 degrees Gemini to 11 degrees of Gemini. So buckle up. It's going to be quite the celestial roller coaster. So I'm going to start with this analogy. Jupiter and Gemini is like Zeus stuck at a trivia night, bombarded with random questions he'd rather avoid. He's out of his element. He's frustrated. And when he goes retrograde on October 9th, we can expect some radically expressive tantrums from Zeus over there in Gemini. For some insight on the expressive tantrums from Zeus, I encourage you to imagine this. Jupiter has been gazing across the zodiac at the sign of Sagittarius, his natural home, since May 25th of this year. It's making him very aware of the fact that he will not be returning to his Sagittarian palace for another six years. Jupiter has about a 12-year orbit around the sun. But let's go deeper with this analogy. Let's picture that Zeus, Jupiter, and Gemini is in Plato's cave. Jupiter and Gemini is like Zeus lost in a mental maze distracted by flickers of truth, much like the prisoners in the cave who only see shadows. He's seeking the broader wisdom he naturally craves, but it's buried in the labyrinth of thoughts and ideas. This retrograde forces Jupiter to question his identity, his truth, and his personal sense of direction. He feels wronged, and as mentioned, he's frustrated. And let's be honest, he's ready to throw some lightning bolts around, but unleashing a storm won't help. Just like the prisoners who must slowly move toward the light, Jupiter's soul, or higher self, or we could even say Jupiter's universe, has put Jupiter in a place where he has very few options other than to process and reflect on everything he's ever known to believe. 
Remember, retrogrades are all about root words with R-E, such as rethink, reevaluate, reset, and most importantly, relax. Charging ahead gives a false sense of control, and trying to break out of this forest too soon will only lead to more Gemini confusion. I encourage you all to think of this Jupiter retrograde for 2024 as a supercharged Mercury retrograde season. And here's why. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. On top of that fact, Uranus, the higher octave of Mercury, is retrograde in Taurus during most of the lifespan of this Jupiter retrograde. Uranus will be doing a backward dance through the sign of Taurus until January 27th, 2025. And curiously enough, about a week later on February 4th, our notorious Jupiter will station direct. So there's clearly a larger plan brewing between these two planets, Uranus and Jupiter, with threads stretching all the way from the start of Uranus's station retrograde back on August 29th, and threads that will go all the way through to when Jupiter exits its shadow period sometime in April of 2025. It's safe to say that this energy isn't going anywhere fast, so we have plenty of time to remember who we truly are. With Taurus being an Earth sign, Uranus's retrograde here adds another layer of sensory awareness. It's like the ground beneath us shaking in this metaphorical forest. Yes, the one that Zeus is currently lost in with Uranus and Taurus in mind. Maybe you've noticed new psychic abilities developing within you, or perhaps you've found a spirit guide. Whatever it is, Jupiter's retrograde will give you time and space to explore these gifts. Speaking of perceptual gifts, or more so just perception in general, Gemini's energy can feel like chasing squirrels around. And if you're someone like me with a Gemini rising, you are very sensitive to Mercury retrograde, and you're going to be very sensitive to this Jupiter retrograde. I do, luckily, have a natal Mercury retrograde, so I'll be able to keep my cool for the most part. Regardless, Natal Mercury retrograde or not, I have been working over the last two months on focusing my scattered energies. I have been sharpening my mental archery, and I expect that the target will become clearer in my mind's eye throughout this retrograde period to come. Jupiter's retrograde wraps up around February 4th, 2000. 25. So think of this as your chance to refine your mental archery. If you're not feeling those psychic vibes yet, you may be lost in the woods with Zeus. Gemini's curiosity can lead to distractions, and it's easy to get caught in a whirlwind of mental energy. For me, this Jupiter retrograde is taking place in my first house. So I plan to use this time wisely, especially in areas ruled by Mercury, such as communication, short distance travel, technology, and learning. What I choose to mentally consume, how I speak to myself, and how I choose to communicate with others will be crucial. Jupiter has a way of expanding everything it touches. And since this retrograde is also conjunct my natal south node, I expect to reconnect with people from my past, both in this life and from the ones beyond. These encounters, I expect, will play a significant role in shaping the evolution of my identity and sense of self. To make matters more tricky in the skies, the trickster Mercury will be throwing in his hat 
into the ring of mercurial chaos on November 25th, and he plans to be there until December 15th, 2024. Shockingly enough, but not really, because there is no such thing as coincidences, Mercury will be stationed retrograde at 22 degrees of Sagittarius, which is near a perfect opposition to where Jupiter stations retrograde in Gemini. I suspect all of us will be left with a hefty Mercury retrograde hangover come the end of this Jupiter retrograde in February. The whole shadow period will be the hangover. Expect to recover from this massive shock to your nervous system around the start of February. February 4th through April of 2025. For a higher timeline perspective, we could view this shock to the nervous system as cosmic downloads from your higher self. Oh, and speaking of higher self, let's bring in Vesta, the goddess of the sacred flame. She'll be squaring Jupiter at the time of Jupiter's retrograde on October 9th, offering us an opportunity to tap into her wisdom of patience and dedication. Her presence could spark a spiritual awakening. Considering Neptune in Pisces is also retrograde and Juno in Libra is tightly opposite Chiron, who is also retrograde over in the sign of Aries during this Jupiter retrograde station, we might see significant societal discussions about power dynamics and we might see discussions around the divine feminine bubbling up. Women's matters, particularly sexuality and health, could come into focus, and long taboo topics might finally become dinner table conversations. Now, here's something more to ponder. Vesta square to Jupiter in Gemini aligns at 21 degrees of Virgo, with an orb of less than one degree. At the same time, Juno sitting at 21 degrees Libra opposes Chiron retrograde in Aries. And remember... Mercury will station retrograde at 22 degrees of Sagittarius, just one degree off from our repeating 21 degree theme. This repetition is striking, and it's hard not to reflect on the deeper significance of these positions, both astrologically and astronomically. For instance, Sagittarius, where Mercury is set to retrograde, sits near the center of the Milky Way, while Jupiter retrograde plays out right across the sky in Gemini. When we're speaking astrologically, the sign Gemini is closely linked to Orion. Orion is a constellation that is astronomically located near the twins, the Gemini constellation in our galaxy. In the practice of galactic astrology, we use the constellation Gemini to locate and work with fixed stars that exist within the astronomical constellation Orion. I'm going to walk you through a little example of galactic astrology through the discussion of Jupiter station retrograde. Orion's fixed star, Tabit, rests at 11 degrees of Gemini while Betelgeuse is at 28 degrees of the sign. This means Jupiter will be moving back and forth over much of the Orion constellation during its retrograde. In fact, Jupiter stations retrograde near Minpaka, another fixed star at 22 degrees of Gemini. Furthermore, the constellation Andromeda spans much of Aries, and Chiron will be tightly conjunct three fixed stars of the constellation. Three fixed stars at the degrees of 21 and 22 degrees during the time of Jupiter's station retrograde on October 9th. These three fixed stars in the constellation Andromeda have Chinese names that I do not wish to gut on air, but I do encourage you to look up the names of these three stars yourself and do your own research. You can simply search 21 degrees, 22 degrees of the constellation Andromeda. What stands out here is the symbolism of Andromeda herself, the maiden chained 
to a rock. She represents Sophia, the divine archetype of universal wisdom, which seems like an important theme to note in this retrograde period. On the other side of the galaxy, Juno is conjunct two significant fixed stars, Foramen and Spica. Foramen is expected to go supernova in the near astronomical future, while Spica, closely associated with Virgo, is considered one of the luckiest stars in the sky. That's particularly good news, considering how well Jupiter and luck tend to go together. However, Foramen, remember, is expected to go supernova, so makes me think about those radically expressive tantrums Zeus was predicted to throw around the time of this station retrograde. Definitely something to be mindful of, right? The repeating themes of 21 and 22 degrees across these placements are no coincidence. If we add numerology to this mix and break down the numbers 21 and 22, we will find that 2 plus 1 equals 3 and that 2 plus 2 equals 4. We are dealing with the number energies of three and four. Three embodies change and the role of the witness. And four holds the energy of radical truth and resilience. As Jupiter begins its retrograde through the Orion constellation, and as we approach Mercury's retrograde in Sagittarius, the cosmos are clearly asking us to slow down, reflect, and integrate lessons. Orion represents humanity as a whole, socially, physically, and psychologically. Stay grounded through the retrograde storm. Keep your focus sharp and trust that the universe is offering you a path of growth. Thank you for joining me on this epic exploration of the coming Jupiter Station retrograde on October 9th, 2024. Keep looking to the skies for guidance. And remember, the stars aren't just above, they're within each of us. This is Liz Grace Christie, sending you off with love. Until next time. Hi, it's Liz Grace again. I'm here to sign off, but I want to thank you for listening all the way to the end. And if you've made it all the way this far, I would suggest giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment. Appreciate y'all. Have a good one. Bye.